Both of these boys have the chronic blood disorder known as hemophilia. Hemophilia can severely restrict a person's life. It can dominate him. But it doesn't have to. Today, the difference between a lifestyle that is dictated by the disease and one that is based on the interests of the individual can be a simple commitment to modern ideas of health care. If the average person has a medical problem, he just goes to a doctor who will diagnose the illness, treat it, perhaps giving the patient a prescription and simple instructions to follow. But it's different with a chronic disease. The patient can't just turn the problem over to a doctor. He has to be more involved with his treatment. In the case of hemophilia, the patient who wants to lead a normal life must learn about his symptoms, the frequency of his bleeds, and the effect of treatment. Many people with hemophilia eventually know more about it than the average doctor. Yeah, I've had a lot of troubles in emergency centers and hospitals. Doctors that don't know what they're doing, nurses that don't know what they're doing. This is something we've had to live with and deal with all of our lives. My son did develop a bleed uh, from trauma playing in the snow. At that time, I just took him to the hospital and I had a letter from Dr. Lazarson stating the ability that I had with the comprehensive care program. And, uh, but they were not ready at that time to recognize it, I guess you might say. And it caused a stir in the emergency room when I asked for immediate attention. With hemophilia, the patient himself ultimately becomes responsible for his well-being. The average general practitioner sees thousands of patients a year, treats hundreds of diseases but in his entire career may never see a person with hemophilia. Actually, the only patients with hemophilia that I've taken care of were during the first year of my residency. Now, a patient with hemophilia can have some very serious problems. And in order to take care of these, I would need to have a center that I could refer to, both for information and for the care of the patient. I can handle the general health problems of the patient but I do need a center to help manage this hemophilia. The impact of a chronic disease like hemophilia is much more than just physical. It can affect the person's finances. It can affect the way he sees himself, the way he sees the world around him. It can make a difference in the friends he makes and what he does for recreation. It can affect the kind of job he gets, the kind of career he is able to pursue. All of these have to be dealt with because what could be just an ordinary problem can become insurmountable if you have a chronic disease. Anyway, I'm not really sure that she was going to relay the information that she, we wanted relayed to her mother, so I double-checked that when we come back. Do they understand the significance of the, of the carrier testing? Yeah, <laughs> very much so. That would be very this is the key to leading a more normal life. Comprehensive care. The sister doesn't really want to get involved that much. Initially, she was very interested Treating the whole patient. The coordinated system of medical and non-medical professionals who treat not only the physical, but the psychological, social, economic, and vocational aspects of the disease. All right. But frequently there are many problems. Just about any hospital is equipped to provide the elements of a comprehensive system of health care for the person with hemophilia. A fully stocked blood bank, an emergency room capable of treating persons as outpatients, access to a modern dental facility with a staff trained to treat the patient with coagulation disorders, a physical therapy department, and a modern laboratory. Perhaps we should move on. I have just some feedback on that, uh, that lad who came off his bicycle. The coordinated team effort includes a hematologist whose time is devoted to caring for patients with hemophilia and research into the inherited coagulation deficiency. Keep it covered. He was continuing to infuse with crop precipitate. Level of deficiency and type of deficiency. That's right. An experienced nurse coordinator who is available in person or by telephone at any hour for patient consultation. Show that he had no fractures or anything, but there was a, the old residual uh, thickening and narrowing of the joint space. An orthopedic surgeon whose efforts correct deformities and prevent damage to the joints and muscles of the patient. Well, it must be. It, it, it is ongoing. But you have to get a baseline. Anyway. How's he doing with his schooling? 
well the last i knew he was doing ok going and enjoying it and liking it and thinking about a psycho social worker who is a valuable resource in helping people adjust to the problems of hemophilia realistic handle on what's being used where he's had a number of bleeds into the left and came in last week with a bleed into the right we splinted him a physical therapist who helps patients strengthen muscles and develop and maintain normal function of joints, cutting down on chronic disability. So we're talking about facial trauma, and we have to deal with an outside lab for a dental prosthesis and that. It's an expensive endeavor, but we do have the CCS coverage. Which and often a financial aid officer who helps patients cope with the financial burden of hemophilia. Situation, CCS and all that, financial responsibilities will be taken care of. Jim, would you bend your knee a little bit? A little bit more. Okay, that's good. Uh, you can see there's still fluid in the joint space. It's going to have to be very careful in the next couple of weeks as far as his activity is concerned. You're going to have to decide how much you should push him, just how much activity, because it could be very serious later on. The doctors really make me feel like I'm a part of the team, a member of the team. Each doctor is it's gone into detail in my terms to where I can understand uh, exactly what I'm dealing with with this disease. And they have shown me what to look for and what to do in case. And when I take them into the hospital, a lot of the doctors look at me as though I don't know what I'm talking about, and they end up calling my doctor. He tells them, well, she knows more about it than I would because she's right there with him all the time. I think that if I, it hadn't been for the clinic, I never would have learned what to look for. The person with hemophilia or any other chronic disease has to deal with a care system, sometimes on a daily basis for his entire life. So the more he is able to coordinate the system according to his needs, the more he can dispense his own care, the more freedom he has. Good morning. Do you have my AHF ready? Yeah, sure. There you go. Thank you. Well, I started in financing 12 years ago, worked my way up through finance companies and banks on into a savings and loan position. Been in that for seven years. I'm content with what I've got now, but I've got a long way to go and it just takes a lot of hard work. So I go ahead and live a normal life, work and play and do things almost everybody does. The treatment centers have been a big help. The home treatment program has made it possible to do this. But with hemophilia, I can do whatever I want as long as I learn what my limits are, as long as I take it easy and do whatever I am doing well. Uh, everybody's got a problem of one kind or another, so I've just adjusted to my problem. Nothing special required other than knowing what your problem is and what's needed to take care of it. When I moved to Orange County, there wasn't a treatment center there we organized a chapter and worked with directly with the hospital we went in and explained what was needed to treat hemophilia in a very relaxed and casual manner we did it ourselves it was strictly hemophiliacs and parents of hemophiliacs uh, working with the hospital with the medical treatment available at the centers home treatment i can be a contributing member of society anybody can one of my girlfriends who was a nurse noticed that there was hematomas underneath his skin and she suggested that we go have some tests so they did the initial testing I went in one day they did the tests all the lab tests and then the next day we went back and they told us he indeed had <laughs> hemophilia the severe kind they had us come in for I can't remember how many sessions probably four or five I think the only thing that kept me from understanding was my own not ignorance, but I, I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to go down there. I kept myself from, you know, finding out things, but they were really very willing and they, they to provide the information and they said, anytime, call us for any reason. So I think that they're very helpful. They seem to care a lot. During the time that they were down south, uh, they really didn't have any uh, kind of care or they really weren't very much aware of of hemophilia as a uh, blood disorder as such. None of the doctors down there had any training or any knowledge of hemophilia. 
But uh, after coming back to Children's Hospital and with the comprehensive program they have going there now, it's just really uh, a world of difference. <laughs> One of the important elements of comprehensive care is patient education. Knowing about the disease, learning about it, is knowing how to stay independent. What we're going to be doing today is just focusing on one aspect, and that's just clarifying the diagnosis for you and the genetics. Education programs are held to inform parents and patients about the nature of hemophilia. What you want to do is treat early. That's the philosophy today. We know that early treatment will probably not prevent... The centers serve not only patients and their families, but employers, teachers, and anyone who wants more information. ...in the future. Take a look at this. You can see this joint, how swollen it is. With this educational process, and with the patient understanding the true elements of comprehensive care, he will ultimately be able to seek those elements from any facility in any community. The person with hemophilia will never be able to live completely without consideration for his disease. But the physical, financial, and psychological repercussions of hemophilia can be minimized with the right kind of support. Comprehensive care, treating the whole patient. Comprehensive care is the accepted way to treat hemophilia, but in many parts of the country it's not available. But even in the most remote areas, a comprehensive system of health care is possible if the patient coordinates it himself. For the person with hemophilia, this means being able to avoid crippling and personally destructive problems and being able to lead a normal, independent life.